What's going on, people? This is uh, Kevin Kelly. Shoutouts to all my subscribers. If you guys haven't subbed to my Black Junction TV channel yet, please do so. Black Junction TV dot... No, it's Black Junction dot TV slash at Kevin Kelly. Okay. In this in this video here, I'm going to talk about equality. It seems to be the hot topic now where we have feminists talking about equality. They're talking about the gender pay gap and women sh should should be getting the same pay as men and you know all of these things amidst the whole Monique situation. She's talking about pay equality and gender bias and a whole bunch of nonsense. But what I realize and what a lot of other guys have realized too is that they're not, they're never mentioning the cons of equality. They only talk about the perks, you know. They just want to get the money. They want to get the benefits of being a man, but they never want to deal with the, the trade-offs, which is the harsh reality, the opposite to the benefits. Here I'm going to read an article that came out in 2012, no, 2015, I'm sorry. It's called, uh, The Death Penalty Has a Gender Bias. It's on the Huffington Post. At 12.21 a.m. Eastern Time on Wednesday, September 30, Kelly Gisendaner became the 16th woman executed in the United States since the U.S. Supreme Court reinstated the death penalty in 1976. The Georgia woman was sentenced to death in 1998 for convincing her boyfriend to shoot her husband and was the first woman in 70 years to be executed in that state. However, in these same 39 years, the United States has executed 1,399 men. Even death row shows a gender bias, whereof the 3,035 people on death row, only 54 of them are women. Why is it so rare for women to be put to death? A quick background check on the death penalty would include the fact that there are 31 states that still provide this punishment. However, the South tends to use the punishment more frequently with Texas and Oklahoma accounting alone accounting for 640 of the 1,415 ex executions since 1976. On average, women account for 10% of the arrests for murder. However, as the legal process moves towards death row, the percentage of women decreases significantly. Only 1.1% of women are eventually executed, including the execution this week of Kelly Gisendaner or Gisendaner. So what accounts for this drastic difference in the number of women executed? Let's break down the main arguments. Argument 1. Women commit fewer murders than men. One argument is that men commit more murders and death penalty worthy crimes than women. The numbers back this theory with men at fault for 90% of the 15,094 murders committed in 2010, the FBI most recent year for which, I'm sorry, the most recent year for which the FBI has data. What the numbers do not take into account is the fact that not all murders are considered eligible to face the death penalty. Additionally, how the murder was committed also plays a role in sentencing. The factors that go into how a person gets 
the death penalty tends to favor women. Even with these numbers, this argument is flawed. When the statistics are adjusted for the larger number of murders by men, women are still sentenced to death at a lower rate. Argument 2. We live in a chivalrous society. With the fact that we still need feminism to gain basic equality <laughs> in the United States, I, I had to laugh at that. There's no question that we still live in a very paternalistic society. But is this belief that men need to protect women impacting whether they receive the death penalty? Death Penalty Information Center Executive Director Richard Dieter told Business Insider that it's as simple as the fact that when it comes to murderers, jurors just see women differently than men. It's often the idea that women were acting under the influence of others are emotionally fragile and therefore shouldn't be held as accountable as men. <laughs> Pause right there. I watch a lot of Snapped and Solved ID, and this is true. They always have sympathy for these women, regardless of the heinous crimes they commit. They always find an excuse for them. Let's continue. Business Insider quotes, Ohio Northern University law professor Victor Stribe as saying, it's just easier to convince a jury that women suffer from emotional distress or other emotional problems more than men. This belief of the sad, weak woman leads into the third argument as why so few women receive the death penalty. Argument three, the evil woman theory. According to some researchers, it's only the woman who fall into certain categories that gain the protection from chivalry. The women who benefit are the feminine, docile, mothering and chastity women, also likely white and heterosexual. It is the unladylike, aggressive or sexually promiscuous women who jurors see as more of a threat to society. Jason Daner is a perfect example of this theory in action. She falls under the unlikely, sorry, under the unladylike and sexually promiscuous umbrella since she was having an affair and had her then boyfriend kill her husband. While the second two arguments may not be as false as the first one, they still don't fully explain why so few women are ever put to death. The main reason is much less interesting but all the more important. Argument 4. Men are sentenced to death more than women because of how statutes are written and how the circumstances around the crimes are weighed. I know, boring, right? But think about it. Who was eligible to be elected to state legislatures for most of our country's history? Old, mostly white men. Therefore, who likely wrote the statutes of murder? Old white men. Who decided which factors would favor someone getting the death penalty and which would count towards them not getting it? Old white men. So it makes sense that the statutes are written with the male belief as to what crimes are worse and when factors should point towards the death penalty. Although the list of specific factors can vary by state, most states include as aggravating factors the potential future dangerousness of, of a defendant, their prior history of violence, whether the murder was during the commission of another felony, and their criminal record. Okay. Um, let me go further down here. Uh, okay. Okay, most states still practice capital punishment also do not have the killing of an inmate partner or a child as an aggravating f favor. Yet these are exactly the types of murders that women are most likely to commit. 
according to Professor Elizabeth Rappaport of the University of New Mexico Law School. According to a study by the NIH, 60% of the murders committed by a woman were, uh, were against family member or, in, or intimate partner compared with only 20% of men. I made a mistake. I said inmate is intimate. Look again at the case that started this article. Kelly Gizendaner, I cannot pronounce his name, had, had Kelly Gizendaner had her then-boyfriend kill her husband. It seems that men find the idea of killing a stranger more horrific than the thought of killing someone they know. In 80% of the murders committed by men, their victims were either strangers or someone they barely knew. A study conducted in South Carolina found that murders committed against strangers are six times more likely to get the death penalty. This lends support to the theory that murders against strangers tend to favor men receiving the death penalty. You hear that? Further supporting this is the research that found that the types of murders that most often receive the death penalty do not include murdering someone the person knew or lived with. The truth behind why so many women are not executed may not be terribly sexy or interesting, but it is still important. The United States is one of the only small number of nations that continues to practice death penalty. Even worse, the Washington Post reported that the United States have five more executions over the next week. Uh, I shouldn't have, I, I missed out on something. I missed out on something. Hold on. I missed out on something. Anyway, in the interest of time, what this is saying that women tend to murder people they are more close to or intimate with. And in murdering people that you are close to or intimate with, like... A boyfriend or husband or or a relative it doesn't warrant the death penalty but if you murder somebody you don't know a stranger then that warrants a death penalty and they're saying that men tend to murder people they don't know while women tend to murder people they're more close to and this is why women tend to not get the death penalty but the last time I checked, a murder is a murder. Killing someone is killing someone. A life taken is a life taken. You know, but these are the laws that were written. And this article also says that men wrote these laws. So men, you see, we've been railroaded by men. These lawmakers may have been simps. I really don't know. Or it's just a way to you know, regulate the system. But evidently here, women are not being punished. Regardless of what the, the circumstances are or the excuses might be, women are not punished the same way as men are punished. So this, this push for equality has holes. And I think, I think men should fight back against all of this push for equality from feminism. And this is what I think. I don't think it's fair to put men on child support, get half of what the man has. But you have very, 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 very few women suffering the same fate. We have women right now going in on men because of what's happening to Mary J. Blige and Jill Scott as they have to pay alimony and um, pay half of what they have to, 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 to their ex-husbands or whatever, whatever the case is, but they have to pay money. And women are upset. But these women are never upset when the vast amount of men who suffer a divorce are being put on child support and have to pay half of what they have. Look at what Nas is going through. That's hypocrisy right there. I'm out.